another KTM 890 Duke, one of our favorite bikes to do. We're gonna do a little video on this guy. We got a ton of guys hitting us up mainly because they know we're running them in the Moto America series with Andy Debrino, and you know I've done really well there with him on them especially. And uh, yeah, we do a ton of these things. So this one came in, older gentleman, bone stock. We had to put some new Dunlop tires on it because they were had a nail in the rear. Um, he literally has just the MIV slip-on exhaust, nothing else done to it. Uh, he's got the catalytic converter in it, just like a lot of you guys run. So. We're going to do a little video first, uh, baseline, and then we're going to go ahead and do some of our mods and show you the differences. A couple things when you guys dyno these things on the KTM is really important. Make sure you go into your menu, if you're in sport, go back, go to the motorcycle, go to MTC, which is the traction control, hold your set button. You just keep holding it, release it, and it's off now for the dyno. And then you want to make sure your ABS mode's in super moto, so the rear brake ABS is off as well. So let's dyno this thing and see what it'll make. baseline run again 100% stock except for a slip-on as you can see it's pretty much what they always make 109.56 62 foot-pounds of torque extremely lean down low you know rpm wise finally catches up a little bit but that's all because the catalytic converter so there's our baseline 109 horse now we get to do stuff see what the mods will do stay tuned all right so we got the bike off the dyno on our baseline so now we got the parts that we put on these typically for track day and street guys cat delete if you're not going to do the full system the dyno jet power commander five the new one is a six we actually prefer the five but we're not going to get in that today however we have maps for both the five and the six uh, and then this is the rottweiler power plate intake basically it goes up here and opens up the top of the air box to help it breathe a lot better um, we've tried some aftermarket intake kits getting rid of the whole air box altogether and honestly they're not there yet i'm sure they're going to keep working on them um, we might work on some stacks with it as well we're actually working on a few things can't really go into but uh, the power plate with either a full system or just the three-quarter by getting rid of the catalytic converter racetrack use only of course not street legal uh, makes a big difference so this is what it looks like right now we'll get the stuff put in and we'll give you a little update and then we'll dyno it again there's the lid that john's got ready to go pop that off and then in here pull the filter holder Get this big restrictive air filter out of there we like to use the dna air filters the high flow filters they work really well they fit good they actually seal really nice and you can clean them re-oil them with any type of can in type filter oil you can clean them every you know a couple thousand miles so that goes in there and then you're going to put that back line the guides up Push that down, and then instead of the plate, you get three filter choices for this top lid from Rottweiler. This two layer one is we use the most, especially for our street bikes. And then they have a real dense one, which is really good if you ride in the rain a lot or like mud. 
which if you're riding this bike in the mud, you're on the wrong bike. I'm gonna go ahead and install this and do another little video of it. Take your filter that you're gonna use of the three choices. We got blue Loctite on the screws. Once you get them all in, use the blue Loctite and then just get them nice and snug by hand. Okay, so you got your nice little plate. It goes on just like stock and then you're gonna use the stock screws. Same thing, we like to use blue Loctite on them. All right, so John's got the power commander all in there. Two things to watch on these. One, when you route the wires up here with the, by the injector, try to keep them out of the way. Make sure nothing's in the way of your fuel line so when your tank goes down, everything clears. It's a little tight underneath there. One big issue that we've seen with these, and it's actually happened to two KTMs from guys, is where they mount the power commander down in the hole back here. The problem is it goes on the loop, which is no problem, but then it goes right here. This just floats around. If you have it too far over here, when you put the passenger seat on, it will actually pinch the wires. If you have it over here where the mounting of the seat tabs are, you can actually pinch them and we've seen that grounded out. And even underneath here, you need to keep it free. So what we do is once we route it correctly, we just put some tape on there to keep it from sliding around. So if you take it to a shop or a dealer, or for some reason you take the, the seat off and you forget when you go to put it on, as you see, it's in between the gap between the back seat bracket and this bracket. So that way nothing gets pinched because if it pinches, your bike's not gonna run. So just take care. That's really the best way. Carefully between the seat bracket here and this back bracket. And then that way when that gets in and bolted, it's clear and everything's fine. And you can still get your USB cable down and tune it from there. So we just got done tuning the 890. We did a race map for this guy. He races in Mexico off course only, as you can probably guess. Anyway, so it's got the MIV slip on and actually we retained the noise reduction insert because he wants to keep the noise down a little bit. And this 890, when you run an open can, really barks when you don't have a catalytic converter in there anymore for, again, off-road use only. So here you can see we've got the aero mid pipe with no cat. We disable the 202 sensors. You will have a check engine light on, but it does not affect anything on how it runs. The quick shifter works, traction control works, everything works. You just got an annoying check engine light. Again, track day guys, racers, or Mexican highway roll racers, it's not a big deal. If you decide to do a street map, we leave the O2 sensors connected. What it does is it closes out the mapping down low. So down low and part throttle, we cannot adjust the map. The computer will lean it back out. It's not dangerous, doesn't hurt anything. A lot of the guys like it, but this guy wanted the most performance and wanted the mapping as smooth as possible. As you can see, we didn't gain any peak power, which is pretty common. Um, you know, so guys are like, oh, you got 109 to 110. On this bike, what you really want is the mid range. Air fuel now is much flatter and where it should be, not so lean. And yeah, again, you're not going to gain anything up top on these bikes. So if you're looking for power between 9 and 10, you're not going to get it. You're going to have to start doing engine work like we do on some of our other ones. But for the street, let's be honest, you guys are riding these 890s between 5,000 and 9,000 RPM. And with the intake plate, cat delete, and a race map, this thing rips. A I just wanted to thank everybody for watching the video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Be sure to check out our Instagram at EDR Performance. Links down below.